Russia has launched dozens of missiles today at cities across Ukraine, including Kyiv and the country's second largest city, Kharkiv. At least five people were reported killed and dozens injured. The head of Ukraine's army says about half of the missiles were shot down. But a shortage of ammunition is seriously affecting how Ukrainian troops operate in the battlefield. Fred Plykin has uh, seen the desperate situation for Ukrainian units firsthand and he joins us now live uh, from eastern Ukraine with the latest. Fred, great to have you on the story for us. Um, mm. Give me a sense of what you've been seeing and hearing um, from the troops there. Hi there, Lady. Well, the shortages are a big problem uh, for the Ukrainian military on all uh, sectors of the front in the southeast and the east uh, of the country. Artillery ammunition is probably the biggest issue for the Ukrainians, and specifically here in the area where I am right now, around the city of Bakhmut, where currently the Russians are conducting a massive push to try and gain further territory. The Ukrainians are saying the lack of 155 millimeter artillery shells is the main reason why they're having so much trouble holding the Russians up. We went to the front lines and we witnessed that firsthand. Here's what we saw. Artillery is key as Ukrainian forces try to hold off massive Russian assaults on the Eastern Front. But Kiev's ammo shortages are getting worse by the day. This U.S. provided M109 Paladin howitzer near okay. Bakhmut is often yeah. silent because they don't have enough so, shells to target the Russians, the commander tells me. We cannot fulfill our tasks 100 percent, he says, although we really want to. My crew and other crews are just waiting for it and are ready to work around the clock. But it gets even worse. Finally, resupply does arrive, but it's only four rounds. And this type of ammo won't hurt the Russians much. This really illustrates the shortages that Ukrainians have to deal with. Four rounds, that's all they're going to get right now. And by the way, they're not even explosive rounds, they're smoke rounds. These shells will barely explode on impact. It's almost like firing cannonballs in medieval times. But the commander says sometimes it's all they can do. Every shell that is suitable for the Paladin we use, he says, it's better than no shells. The Russians face no such shortages in this area. Ukrainian military intelligence believes Russia produced around 2 million rounds last year and acquired around 1 million from North Korea. Massive barrages have laid waste to Bakhmut and much of the surrounding area. At the headquarters of the 93rd Mechanized Brigade's Artillery Division, the frustration is palpable. From their drones, they can see the Russians gather to continue their assaults on Ukrainian positions, but they often can't take them out because they need to conserve ammunition, the commander tells me. The ratio is about 10 to 1, he says. Ammunition is very important to us. Russia is a country that produces ammo. They have strategic reserves. Yes, they use old Soviet systems, but Soviet systems can still kill. Even without enough ammo, the Ukrainians say they are stopping most Russian assaults here. And the M109 crew did manage to fire at Russian positions. But they know they'll need a lot more firepower to stop Russian advances. So that's the situation on the ground here, Eleni. Some really tough battles are going on around the area of Bakhmut. Very difficult for the Ukrainians to try and hold the lines here. And of course, they've been appealing to European nations to try and provide more artillery uh, ammunition and also to the United States as well. Of course, one of the things that the Ukrainians really are looking to is U.S. Congress and whether that impasse uh, can be uh, stopped and whether or not the U.S. will deliver further military aid to Ukraine, Eleni. Fred Plykin, thank you.